Hello everyone, how's it going everybody? We are Petroleum from Scratch, I'm Vibhyanshu and I'm joined by Mr. Jayesh Char. Uh, we are on the back of a great course that we just uh, we concluded and me and Jayesh, we taught like 80% of that course and it was a great experience interacting with students from across the globe and seeing how much the students were receiving the things that we were teaching. We also thought to you know, right after that course, we also thought, let, let's start with somewhat basic course and uh, more, uh, you know, more curated for the people who are in the beginner stages in the petroleum data analytics careers of theirs. So that's uh, something which is going to come up, but that's not the, uh, that's not the aim of this session. We are uh, here to talk to you about if in case you, because we, uh, both of us have been getting a lot of uh, texts in our DMs. Uh, about how and what does a petroleum data scientist or an energy data scientist do. A lot of students who are in their undergrads, uh, they ask us about if in case they should opt for data science as a career, if in case they should not opt for data science as a career, if they should prepare for something else or they should appear for core petroleum jobs or any sort of career. So they typically want to know what an oil and gas data science job looks like. And this is going to be a session which will, which will be our, you know, storytelling about our experiences and based on the discussions that we have had with the people working in this domain, uh, we will share with you what kind of projects that we do, what are the applications of data science and machine learning on oil and gas industry, what are the skills that uh, you need to have and you can learn and a lot of things basically this is going to be a session that you can come back and you can share across with the community and your younger uh, juniors and and whoever wants to step into oil and gas data science you can uh, refer to this session as a reference session about what actually is oil and gas data science so we'll start with this uh, session and jayesh will start with this presentation hello jayesh uh, hello hello everyone here. how's it going I hope everyone is having a good time. So uh, we will start with the, some basic things that what exactly is data science and why we need data science in oil and gas industry and what are what can be different roles of a data scientist or you can say energy data scientist and all these things. So uh, let's start our presentation uh, with the initial example of what um, with the initial question of what exactly is data science, right? So if you guys have noticed in the past uh, few years as 4G has evolved in India, I'm talking about about India as 4G has evolved, you have seen that internet has reached to each and every corner of our country, right? Even a rickshaw driver also has a internet connection. So with the increase in this 4G, or you can say with the increase in this 4G network, a lot of data has been generated in the past few years, right? And whenever uh, whenever certain thing is generated, we can use we can use that particular thing for solving our day to day uh, our day to day problems, right? So basically, data science is nothing. It is completely uh, uh, it is completely a uh, tool in which you use this particular data for solving your problems, and you use various mathematics and statics uh, operations on that particular data, right? And with the advancement of this uh, 4G as well as advancement in the computing power of your, your computer. So you can say you have seen that NVIDIA has developed a huge GPU systems, right? So dealing with the huge data, or you can say big data has also become easier. And also uh, there is a huge uh, advancement in the uh, algorithm side also. Uh, in deep learning, you have seen a lot of new networks has been discovered day by day so all these things comes together basically data science is nothing it is getting the meaning out of your data whatever data you have you are getting a meaning out of your data and all this machine learning artificial intelligence and deep learning are nothing but the part of this whole data science thing right so uh, now coming to you uh, and coming to our oil and gas industry why we need to use data science in oil and gas industry. First of all, in oil and gas industry also, data has been increased in exponential uh, in exponentially power with the advancement of technology. Many tools like MWD, measurement while drilling, LWD, and many, many, many more tools also. For if uh, we also do certain reservoir simulation, we are kind of generating some data. So why not? To you, why not use this data with some advanced algorithms and get the solution for our problem, right? And also one more important thing, why we can use data science in oil and gas industry. 
four conventional reservoirs for your uh, sandstone and limestone many reservoir simulation tools are available right but the physics behind the unconventional reservoirs unconventional resources for example shale gas and uh, your shale oil all these things physics is very complex behind them so still research is going on in those area so we can basically use the historical data of these uh, particular unconventional reservoirs or resources and kind of help us uh, this historical data can help us if we uh, build a certain algorithm around this particular historical data and try to uh, simulate our reservoir behavior this is one example one example of application of a data science in oil and gas industry many more examples are there but yeah this kind of stands a little bit different because uh, physics is still uh, developing for the unconventional resources so data science can uh, or we can say machine learning algorithms can play a huge role uh, in de uh, developing these uh, unconventional reservoir simulations uh, do you want to add anything here Yeah, let's let's keep on decoding these terms with examples, Jayesh. I mean, I see that uh, you mentioned uh, LWD and uh, MWD, so I'll just uh, switch on yeah. my annotations as well, so that uh, we can also show our audience what we are trying to refer to, right? So basically, our our head should directly step on to because we are petroleum engineers by default, we understand things. Better when they are explained in our domain uh, terminologies. So these days, when uh, any hole is drilled, uh, uh, these these techniques they generate a lot of data. So the volume of the data, uh, volume of data generated is shooting up, which is, I mean, which is in in itself a big victory for the data science industry because this volume of data. Why are people generating this data? They are generating to use. their insights for some actions right and that who will generate these insights these insights will be generated by a data scientist now uh, you ask me uh, why not a normal data scientist and why petroleum data scientist because uh, you can teach uh, you know data science to an engineer but it's impossible to teach the entire engineering domain to a data scientist so the good thing is you come from that engineering domain you know what an lwd is you know what an mwd is you can make sense of the data you know what a caliper log is and how it should look like you know that pressure of of the well bore it can never be negative and something like that uh, you know that theoretical porosity is maximum going to be 47.6 right 47.6 so a, a normal data scientist can never be so certain about these uh, you know concepts of the domain which yeah. are very very crucial in terms of data science Yeah, so very common example is one yeah, uh, one thing i want to add here that's why i use that uh, the term that data science is a tool uh, you cannot uh, kind of make it a domain specific every domain yep. can be every domain problem can be used uh, can be solved by using this tool data science right it, so basically data science is a tool for solving your problem Nothing exactly else. exactly i mean uh, at the very beginning you can start of, of of it thinking like uh, you have uh, casio calculators right everyone in their colleges you solve problems using a calculator now if you start using python for solving those problems yeah. and you go on in a bit advanced level you you realize that hey uh, using python i need a few more tools to do some logarithms or something like that some exponential some gaussian distributions as you learn more and more tools what you are ultimately getting into is the field of data science you are using data science as a tool to solve your problems that's one way to use data science the other way is to generate insights which again becomes a tool because it generates insights and it makes profit for your companies so basically what i want to come at jaysh is that and tell me if i'm wrong uh, we as petroleum engineers have been doing data science already just Since start the tools time, yeah. and all these advanced yeah the naming conventions they are coming in and that's something that i think makes it easier for us to adapt to data science don't you agree yeah i mean you tell me your example yeah. when you joined data science did you find it that difficult to join in or was it interesting uh, yeah it was exactly it was interesting at at least uh, we are doing the data science since the class 9th at least 
I can say <laughs> joining yes. two points uh, in a coordinate geometry and making a line that is nothing but a data science, a linear, simple linear regression thing you can say. So yeah, we are okay. doing data science from a very earlier stage. Yep, that's that's exactly what I I, I love that example, Jesh. Thanks for bringing that up. Like in 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 schools, we used to have these two points. So uh, all these two points are these are data and. What we used to do was we used to draw a line passing through that line. Now, this is a bad model. This is called a model. If you draw this line, this is again a bad model. But if you draw a, a good line passing through both these points, then that's the best model. And that's the if you if you use advanced algorithms to solve something similar to this, that is typically called machine learning and machine deep learning. Yeah. But the starting point yep. is this only, as we can see. Yep. Yep. So moving on to uh, our next part, some of the applications uh, of data science in oil and gas industry. Can you uh, remove these particular annotations? Sure, sure. So yeah. some of the applications of data science in oil and gas industry are some of the examples I've just written. Many more applications can be possible, but these are some of the example that we have seen. First of all, by using seismic data or geological data, we can, uh, we can find out, we can predict the oil uh, oil pockets present inside your traps uh, inside a reservoir row. One of uh, the example is this. Other one is trajectory forecasting while drilling. So you have the drilling data, you have historical drilling data of that particular reservoir, right? So if you know how much or in which direction uh, our uh, hole is, uh, hole is uh, whole trajectory is going on, right by using that historical data we can kind of uh, build a regression uh, regression type of problem here and uh, do the trajectory forecasting for the new wells other one um, very common example of uh, using data science in industry not in oil and gas industry but in all industries is predictive maintenance pam we say so basically in this if we have the failure data of your, uh, if we have the failure data of your equipment, for example, any equipment, if I can take drill pipe, uh, drill pipes after uh, running some, uh, after running some distance, drill pipes are cannot be used, right? If you remember the API grades of drill pipe after running some distance, when the thickness of a particular uh, drill pipe uh, uh, reduces to some certain uh, thickness, you cannot use that certain drill pipe again. Similarly, uh, if we have historical data, for uh, for example, uh, a certain drill pipe, let us say API grade E or whatever, I, I don't remember the API grades, uh, API grade E drill pipe has run 80 miles. I'm just talking uh, random numbers, 80 miles. After running uh, API grade E 80 miles, your drill pipe is not a kind of is not uh, useful for the next run, right? If you have this type of data, we can build a model around it and we can predict that, okay, I have a API grade A pipe that has rained 40 miles, how much more miles it can run, how much more miles it can drill, right? So one application can be uh, solved from here, predictive maintenance of drill pipe. Similarly for pumps and compressors, if we have historical data of failure that, okay, a certain pump is fa uh, failing at a given pressure and temperature, when the pressure of that uh, pump reaches a certain PSI or temperature of uh, that pump uh, reaches a certain uh, uh, degree Celsius, the pump will fail or RPM can also be included. Those all features depend so on your data, whatever data you have. By using this historical data, again, you can predict that how much life of a given pump is pending. So basically in predictive maintenance, we calculate remaining useful life, how much life of a certain equipment we have used and how much more we can use this particular equipment. Next example, EOR screening, right? Everyone knows, every petroleum engineer knows EOR screening, enhanced oil recovery screening. So again, if we have historical data of different, different fields and different, different crude properties, we can build a classification model here again that, okay, when my reservoir rock is having this particular property and my crude oil is having this particular property, then which of the EOR method is the best suited for this particular combination of a reservoir oil and rock, right? your screening uh, again physics based you are screening we have all, all have seen next is pressure prognosis in well testing when will a certain pressure will reach if we have a, a shut up a shut on a shut on our flowing well 
right so if from here we can kind of calculate the time uh, for uh, after how many days a certain pressure will be available in our well in well testing reservoir uh, reservoir fluid properties estimation again a good example if we have again historical all these things depends on the data that you have what type of data do you have and what is your problem statement so you have to take two things data and problem statement and does this data is helping you for solving this particular problem statement these two things need to be taken care of yeah the issue you want to add more yeah can you hear me jesh yeah yeah i mean uh, uh, great points added uh, just wanted to add that i mean whatever techniques we are talking about whatever projects we are talk talking about they basically fall under two major buckets and uh, i hope my pen is visible jesh yeah so they basically fall under two any any machine learning project it basically falls under uh, maybe a regression problem something like uh, uh, you know if you want to predict something something like a whole deviation prediction or something like that that's a regression problem but something like a ur screening or something that becomes a classification problem i mean just wanted to add so that the users whoever i mean uh, the audience whoever is listening to this they can you know segregate all these use cases into various examples and uh, the third one i i always like to add the third third one uh, which is like a forecasting problem which is some paper that we recently recently published yeah, uh, that we published together actually i wanted yeah. to highlight here in production we have also written yep. production forecasting so a recent proud offer of ours <laughs> has been published in alzheimer uh, we will uh, share the link of doi in the given video you can check check out the paper if you want absolutely absolutely yep uh, so so i mean so something like a regression is something for example uh, if you have again for example we know that porosity and permeability they are kind of directly proportional to each other so if in case we knew the porosity values right uh, if we just plotted the porosity values like this and uh, with permeability of course of course you might have to take the logarithm of permeabilities because the scales are different you will realize that hey i think that uh, there is a linear relationship when you feed this into a machine what happens that machine machine takes this data and understands this pattern and machine comes back to comes back to this data and says like hey i think if you did not have the data this is the line that would best best be representing that data and the benefit of that is now you can use this line as a model which is nothing but a machine learning model it's as simple as that you can use this model for predictions on unseen data so that's something that that machine learning is i mean this visualization and all these things they complete the entire data science workflow jesh uh, anything you want to add yeah no no i think uh, it's enough in detail yeah. for more details we will tell you the path right so, right so great great uh, introduction about the use cases let's move on to the next slide jesh yeah yeah give me a second so yeah these are the basic summary of different different machine learning algorithms that we already has discussed basically a regression problem classification problem and forecasting problem forecasting is basically for your time series data two different types of data are there simple data or but data that is related with certain time stamp right for a example one of the example of this time series data is your oil production so basically you have the oil production data with time that okay on 25th june i produced 200 barrels of oil and on 26th june i produced 150 barrel of oil so this particular oil produced will have certain relationship this uh, with this certain time dimension right so that uh, thing need to be taken care of that's why this is a different kind of problem statements time series problems so these are basically some of the examples of different algorithms that can be used for regression there are linear regression random forest uh, or there can be spot vector regression and many more for classification again decision tree random forest xg boost different different algorithms are there and uh, for time series uh, problems arima is there sarima is there and one of our favorite lstms is there nowadays transformers are also used so all th these things comes into picture with the, your time series problems a lot of this time series problems you can also relate with the uh, natural language processing 
right the thing if you guys use uh, siri in apple or uh, alexa so that particular thing understands the the statements that you are saying this sentences that you are saying and those sentences or the word of sentences again have a temporal relationship with each other right it will completely change uh, it will completely change meaning of a sentence if we change the uh, placement of these words so yeah good comparison between nlp and time series problems are there moving on to the next part how to be a good data analyst okay we have talked all this stuff but how to start this particular journey right do you actually want to explain this particular slide yep uh, definitely so whoever follows our youtube channel closely they must have already seen this uh, this flow diagram but happy to introduce it back to those who are again starting it up uh, so basically to start with it like i told you you are already doing calculations in uh, in your kco calculators or whatever as college students uh, how about you start doing the same cal calculation for example i know that uh, let me use a different color for example uh, i know that uh, you know uh, q equals to ka delta p by mu l right i know the darcy's law i know the darcy's law for a linear linear flow now i can do that for example everything was provided i can do that to calculate permeability for uh, for a normal uh, case using a calculator but how about i use for the same thing how about i use now i use python the thing that the benefit of doing that is i can now for various uh, for various flow rates i can flow rate versus permeability or i mean that's that's a that's a example that does not make sense but you know uh, k versus uh, you know you can you can create delta p versus viscosity what is the impact of uh, vis oil viscosity on the pressure at which oil reaches the well bore something like that you can drive intuitions uh, you can make your own visualizations to compare all these parameters for various scenarios and that adds a bit of layers to your understanding when you solve a problem using a calculator you get the answer that hey permeability is 10 milli darcy it does not end there you are still not clear with what the entire formula tells you so that that storytelling that understanding that intuition uh, is very important so the first step is to start learning a tool and we would recommend python because if in case you start with python a lot of resources are available a lot of ml libraries are associated and it's a very popular tool it will make you more hireable as well and you can seek help from us as well because me and jayesh both uh, teach in python and then once you keep on doing these problems Sorry. in python uh, you can now pick a textbook of your choice right pick a textbook book of your choice so that's the first step is done that you have done a few problems simple problems to understand the python syntax and then you pick up a textbook Uh, I pick up my favorite textbook, which is LP Dick uh, for reservoir engineering. You can also pick books like uh, you know a Moyen Guo for mm, yeah for production. One, one of the, of the best, great best book. It also have it will give you every algorithm in such a way that you can develop it in any programming language. Exactly. I mean, uh, I remember that Moyen Guo has a lot of Excel based program uh, yeah. programs, right? They have a lot of Excel based uh, uh numericals that we always skip because we don't know that much excel and we don't want to do that much but now if you do the same thing in python i mean you can create your own repository you can post on linkedin about the various excel based problems in boyen guo that you are converting to python and that will do you great benefits in terms of in terms of your python expertise and also in terms of the concepts that you will understand so in the first three steps you are becoming becoming a great petroleum engineer as well and you are becoming a slowly slowly entering in the field of data science as well yeah, so that's a dual benefit for you initial yeah, data analyst stage you can exactly so you can see by this point you will be growing in a lot of confidence and that has happened to me that has happened to jayesh that has happened to all the friends that we have seen uh, you will you will realize that now you can save a lot of time because you can write one code for one time you can come back every time you have a doubt you can come back to that code and resolve it you don't have to do the hand by hand calculation because you you must be a applied petroleum engineer you must know how to apply it so confidence will grow up in you and then you will you will move forward implement uh, these understandings with more and more tools 
right? You can pick up another examples like one of the most uh, well-connected data analysis topics is well test analysis. If you know well test well testing was developed by a mathematician, so it's it's highly related with mathematics. So there'll be a lot of visualizations. How about you use John Lee, for example, the book, and then you use the uh, examples given in John Lee and recreate them to understand the concepts like the semi-log, the log-log, etc. You develop them in Python. So again, by this point, you are getting great. I mean, I've, I've seen like, uh, I've, if, you, if you calculate in terms of percentile, you'll already be in the 90 percentiles of petroleum engineer students because not a lot of students reach to that level where they can solve well test analysis with Python. So take that challenge. And finally, once you are thorough with all these things and you can solve this benchmark problem, like a material balance or a well test analysis, I can very well say that you are good in Python and now you are happy to go forward and expand your understanding of machine learning algorithms. And the algorithms were just taught to you by Jayesh in the previous slide. You can search about these algorithms one by one. Think of what problem statements can you tackle uh, using these uh, these algorithms. You can read papers on uh, you know one petro. Uh, you can uh, sim sim simulate your own synthetic data sets and think of various problem statements. This is a very important point I will I will bring forward in front of you. And that's why I mean I would like to take this moment to appreciate Mr. Jayesh Char here because uh, he's one of those people who who has a great nick for physics. And that's why what benefit that brings in him is he is able to uh, I'll write this skill in front of you guys, which is a very important skill. He is able to brainstorm. Brainstorm. Brainstorming is very, very important. You have to develop your own ideas. Ideas have to come from you. Ideas have to come from you. And I remember on weekends, me and Jayesh, we should sit together for petroleum from scratch. We develop a lot of problem statements. No one is paying us for that. No one is giving us anything, but just so that we keep on brainstorming, our brains keep on developing new ideas. And that makes us better as data scientists. We are also learning daily. And yeah. finally, once you develop more and more problems, bam, you must have heard this term. We are a good enough oil and gas data analytic engineer. At least we would like to say so. If you yeah. present all these workflows in front of us, you would be happy if we had a company, you would be happy to hire. Jay, exactly. all yours. Exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, as uh, Divyanshu said, uh, brainstorming plays a lot of role. Uh, as me and Divyanshu has also developed many applications. So you can also develop your mini product type of things that basically can help you in future in moving forward that can also show a good thing on your resume as well as if you want to start some of your startup or something like that in there also it can also help so brainstorming is one of the most important thing you have the data you just need to brainstorm that okay what problem statement can be solved by using this data right and start doing that particular thing and there will be scenarios that you uh, when you don't get the perfect data there is no perfect data in this world right all the data is imperfect you have to make that certain data perfect for your problem statement so yeah i think uh, that is the complete roadmap on how to become a good uh, data scientist or data analyst as well oil data scientist we can say or energy data scientist will be a good term for saying this right Right, so are we at the end of the presentation, Jesh? Uh, yeah, this is the end of the presentation, I guess. Right, so basically, uh, how about, like, from where to start? We can start uh, uh, learning all these things. We can start learning all these things from, basically, from our GitHub repositories. We can, you can follow uh, um, my GitHub repository, Jayesh's GitHub repository, but you have to be very thorough with Python. So Python programming is a must. And like Jayesh is writing right now in his very pretty, <laughs> pretty <laughs> handwriting. So, I mean, this is a legendary handwriting, guys. So don't miss this webinar. Watch it for the handwriting. So, these, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me translate Jayesh because this is important. So first step is to, <laughs> first step is to learn Python. Then you have to understand NumPy and Pandas and all these things will help you do data analysis and data visualization. So these two, let's let's start, let's focus on, you know, uh, these two steps for the first few weeks at least. 
and if in case you want to join a course that is taught by us <laughs> advertisement so we are uh, we are coming up with a course that starts tomorrow tomorrow as in 23rd of july uh, on on a saturday evening uh, indian time so if you want to register uh, please go ahead uh, we might share links with you in the description of this video but we teach every weekend we teach basically almost every weekend we are connected with students uh, i mean i also have a webinar at iit ias in dhanbad and after that i'm also teaching a course jayesh also is teaching courses elsewhere so we are almost every every weekend we are teaching so if in case you want help from us about these topics please please feel free drop us a note on linkedin or whatever so all these points that jayesh has written numpy pandas these are the tools statistics is a, a good data uh, estimation technique uh, you can use then machine learning algorithms you need to have a great grasp on mathematics so please focus on that because you are going to develop tools for the industry and you don't want to develop uh, terrible tools you want to develop terrific tools and finally deep learning so these are the step wise things that you must focus on so happy learning guys i think jay shall you want to add yeah only one point. last thing as uh, divyanshu already mentioned uh, we will be starting our journey from tomorrow so if you guys are interested uh, you can join the course if you guys are not interested then again we are here in on the youtube channel itself here we will be teaching yeah. every day all right all right let's let's see uh, see you tomorrow guys whoever are watching the yeah. session and the link uh, for the uh, course registration will be in the description of this video so Okay. Yeah. See you. Happy See learning. You. Happy learning. Bye.